25th of October 2021 when I gave my first interview of life and I got selected in TCS for a digital profile and exactly on the same date four years down the line I gave interview to the Accenture and I got selected as a Java developer but you know what throughout this gap of four years I was rejected by many companies I applied to JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, IBM and every time I heard only one sentence that we will get back to you and there I was sitting so refreshing my mailbox 10 times a day just to see one mail we are regret to inform you that you have been rejected but finally I decided okay I will not give up but I will change the way I am preparing for the interview so the one week of this Diwali 2025 every day I wake up at 5 am just to prepare well enough so that I don't miss any upcoming chance whichever I'm giving the interviews for. So, and that's what the Accenture comes in and finally I cracked a Java developer role. So in this video, I will be talking about in depth about how I applied to this Accenture, what was the interview process and the most important thing that I will be discussing about the important subjects and the topics which is most recommended as a Java developer role. And finally, I will also be telling you the resources which I follow to prepare for this interview. And one thing is for sure, this video might be for Accenture interview experience but if you watch this video till end this video will be really helpful for any company as a Java developer. I highly recommend you to stay till the end of this video to get based out of it. And yes, just in case if you are new to our channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe the channel for more such informative videos. Now without any wasting time, let's start. How I applied? To be honest, I haven't applied to Accenture from their career portal. I simply got the message of the recruiter on my LinkedIn profile stating that we are basically looking for a Java full stack developer role and are you interested for this role? Then I simply said that yes, I am interested for this role. And after this, they basically asked me the some follow up questions like what is your current CTC, how much CTC you are expecting and what is your notice period. Now see, there are so many students are there who says that we don't receive such messages from the recruiter on my LinkedIn profile. So what should we do? See, to get the message of the recruiter on your LinkedIn, there are so many things that really matters. For example, your LinkedIn profile should be well optimized so that it can look more impactful because recruiters whenever search for the candidates, they want the candidates who can create the impact on their resume and they are well versed in the technology in which they are basically looking for. For example, these are the certain things that you need to take care while optimizing your LinkedIn profile. Make sure that your bio is particularly in line with your role, experience and technology. Don't just mention the technology in which you are working, also mention the year of experience you have, the role which you are working for and the technology. Second, about section. Most people ignore the about section or most people write a lengthy about section for your LinkedIn profile. Recruiters don't have enough time to read every single statement of your about statement. So it should be of 5 to 6 line scripts to the point in such a way that the recruiter can easily understand what exactly you are doing in which company you are doing and what is your role and the technology in on which you are working on. Now see, I can't discuss everything in detail about the LinkedIn profile but if you want to know the clear detail about how we can optimize the LinkedIn profile so let me know in the comment section I will bring the special video on that topic. So now let's discuss about the interview process of the Accenture company. So when I gave my interview, I gave a three rounds of interview out of which the first round was specifically for the Accenture company the second round was from client side since I will directly get onboarded to the project and the third round was a managerial and HR round. So there were exactly three rounds that took place and all the process was happened within a week. So I gave my first interview on 25th, the second round was on 27th and then I gave on 29th. So these were the days on which I gave my interview. Uh, now see, for me it was the three rounds but it might differ for the other people as well because the client interview might happen or might not happen or for some people there might be a three rounds or four rounds so it totally depends upon the year of experience you are having the role which you are applying and the dependency of the company what exactly they are looking for that candidate now let's discuss which are the most important topics and what was questions asked to me during a time of interview so my interview was heavily focused on java spring boot microservices and some basics of dockers apart from that they asked me the questions on what is your current project in tcs 
my personal project data structures and oops concept so let's first start with the oops concept so for oops concept basically they ask me the questions like what is the difference between abstractions and interface when you will be using abstraction and when you will be using interfaces also at the same time they ask me to tell the real life example of every single oops concept so make sure that you are not only preparing for oops concept you also know that when to use which oops concept and what is the real life example of that particular oops concept after this they basically went on to data structures now for me there were so many questions was asked on data structures as well like based on some graph based on some trees and then come link list of course they haven't told me to implement any of the code in the interview because there was a time constraint and talking about my preparation in data structures i haven't prepared for data structures because i was preparing for data structure last 3 and 1/2 years if you take a look at my lead code profile i have already solved more than 550 problem so i am really good in data structure so it was not much bothering issue for me to give an answers on data structures and then they asked me the questions on my current project which i am working in tcs they asked so many questions to me like what business you are working for which is your client what exactly you are working how you are doing then they asked me some managerial questions like how you took the ownership what problem you solved and how did you solve that problem technology in which i am working and then then basically i told them that okay these are the features i basically look after in my tcs then they ask me like okay tell me how you taken care of this one what technology you use so certain question they ask now reason why they basically ask you questions on their current projects in your company in which you are working on is just just want to check your personality towards working and how you react to the different situation during a time of work are you a team player or are you a solo contributor so all these things basically checked when they ask questions about your past or the current in company in which you are working on and then comes the most important features that is java spring boot and microservices and some basics of docker so let's talk about the java so based on java they were heavily focused on the new features of java like features 8 feature in 17 and 21 so they asked me the questions on functional programming that is stream api for each parallel stream i was sure said sure that they will 100% give me a program to implement using stream api so what basically i did is for whole one week which i was preparing for i simply went on to chat gpt and i told them that give me a 10 problem statement so that i can implement it with the help of stream api and in this way i practice every day 10 10 questions on stream api and i become a really good in it and luckily i got a same problem in interview as well that is i was given a two string and i need to check whether they are anagram of each or other or not and importantly we have to implement it with the help of stream api so make sure that you have a strong grip on stream api then comes a lambda expression functional interface types of different functional interface was asked to me like what is predicate what is consumer what is supplier so all these questions was asked to me during a time of java based interview and then comes a multi threading they ask me when you will be using thread class when you will be using runnable interface what is the difference between thread class and runnable interface as well so you have to be thoroughly good in advanced java as well don't just sit and tell that the core java is enough for me no if you are trying to apply for the back end engineers core java alone will not help you then comes the most important features and that is exceptional handling they ask me what is checked exceptions what is unchecked exceptions and they ask me how you can write a code for writing your own custom exceptions so that's why i am telling you don't just prepare you should also be good at implementing the things they are telling me for me out of 100% i would say that nearly 40 to 45% of my interview was heavily focused on implementation when i am trying to explain them any of the concept they will tell me okay you have already shared your screen just write an implementation for this now after java they basically asked me about solid principle then i explained the solid principles after that they told me what are the different design patterns you know then i told them about creational behavioral and structural design pattern i gave a certain example of these as well and again they told me to implement the factory design pattern so that's why i'm telling you that whatever you are preparing don't just prepare the concept or mug up the thing you should be really good at implementing those things as well when i implemented the factory design pattern again they asked me so many follow up questions like when you will be using factory design pattern why do we need a factory design pattern why can't you use different design pattern in place of factory design pattern 
so there were so many questions was asked and then after that they basically moved to the spring boot on which they basically asked me the questions like what is at the rate spring boot application what if we don't mention this what is the internal working of spring boot applications and tell me the steps how you will connect your java application to the database with the help of data jpa and then they asked me how you can handle the exceptions in the spring boot then they asked me what is stereotype components uh, string aop what is the structure of spring framework what is the structure of spring boot framework what is the difference between spring boot and spring boot, uh, spring framework so all these questions were asked there were so many other questions advanced questions was there i don't remember it now and then they moved to the some microservices now in microservices there was no enough questions to ask them so they simply asked me the simple questions like what is the difference between monolithic and uh, microservice application when you will be using monolithic when you will be using microservice architecture uh, what is fin how does the different microservices communicates with each other so all these questions were asked most importantly they also asked me about rest template jdbc template and how you will secure the rest api in microservices so these were asked and after that they basically asked me do you know the certain do you know about a docker and when i said yes they asked me about container images and registry this was the basic question but after that they started asking me the commands on docker so if you are mentioning the about docker make sure that you also know some basic commands of the docker as well now talking about the resources i followed so for docker i basically preferred the standard documents of docker docs because they are so easy to read and understandable also at the same time i checked some of the youtube videos as well to have, have some hands on experience about java i read a book called as a complete reference in java where i got a complete idea about the things which i need to study for the interview and importantly about uh, system design i am studying it from the gfg articles i studied about the different types of patterns and solid principles spring boot again i referred uh, some of the youtube videos like we have the telescope channel so you can refer this as well apart from that i read articles on gfg as well and most importantly i was not only studying also i was experimenting some implementation as well what will happen if i don't mention this what will happen if i write this somewhere else so try to implement these things concept really well because if i tell you again i am telling you that out of 100% 40 to 45% of my interview was heavily focused on implementation part so again the implementation parts becomes a lot more important now if you want to make me to make a complete detailed videos about the important features that you should prepare for java spring boot and microservices let me know in the comment section i will bring the special video on each subject uh, which are the important topics questions you need to prepare really well and just in case if this video has helped you really well do let me know in the comment section don't forget to like share and subscribe our channel because going forward i'm going to bring lot of exciting videos for you which will help you for your interview whether you are a fresher or experienced person till then see you in the next video mm -hmm.